This is the definition of attention span. It's the amount of time that someone can stay focused on one particular activity. Now I've got a quick pop quiz. What do you think today's average attention span is? Do you think it's four minutes? Do you think it's 45 seconds? Do you think it's nine seconds? Or do you think it's two minutes? For those of you that guessed nine seconds, you win. But the question is this, if we have just nine seconds to capture someone's attention, doesn't it make sense that we communicate as clearly, as concisely, and as confidently as possible? That's what I'm gonna talk about today. Now this is a picture of me and my two boys, and yes, it is from a few years back. I love them both, and being a dad is my top priority in life. It always has been, and it always will be. The opportunities that I have to communicate with them are endless, and I do my very best to have clear conversations with them throughout all of their phases and stages, and those two have plenty of phases and stages. But I also have a commitment to communicate as effectively as possible to a wide variety of people with varying personalities. This can be challenging at times though, because we can't always see how people prefer to communicate. Now my boys each have their own unique communication style, and as a dad, I have learned many lessons. But I'd like to share two key lessons that I learned early on. Lesson one, a one communication size does not fit all. And lesson two, how important it is to listen. Now my boys are in their later teens now, but when my youngest was just about six, he was officially diagnosed with being on the autism spectrum. Dr. Stephen Shore, who is autistic and is a professor at Adelphi University, he once said, when you meet one person with autism, you just met one person with autism. It's a popular quote that highlights how diverse the spectrum is and I couldn't agree more. My son is high functioning and I am immensely proud at the development that he continues to make. Now I'm sharing this personal story with you because in addition to the lessons I continue to learn as a dad, combined with the years that I did spend coaching youth sports, my ongoing public address announcing for an NFL team, and my business background, it's all taught me how much there is to gain when we learn how to communicate effectively to a wide variety of people in a wide variety of situations. And it all starts with listening. Now we all have our own unique communication style that we bring to the table. But let me just have you imagine for a moment that everyone on this side of the room prefers to communicate in a short or a concise manner, like bullet points or just give me the facts. And I'd like you to imagine that everyone on this side of the room prefers to communicate with a lot more detail with examples, with sharing stories and asking questions. How do you think a conversation would go when you mix those two different styles? Well, needless to say, I think it would take a little bit of understanding and a whole lot of patience because conversations require patience and perspective because we're all processing information differently. Have you ever been in a conversation? You ask someone a question and the answer didn't quite align to the topic, that person was probably processing something differently. And in today's online age, it can be tough to have that sense of perspective that is needed to truly understand someone else. Maybe you've seen this phrase, or perhaps you've heard it. It may have sounded something like this. Well, yeah, but that's not really what I meant to say. You ever sent an email, a direct message, a text, or put a social media post up online? It seemed just fine in your head, so you tapped it out and you hit send. But it was interpreted differently on the other end. This happens a lot when we communicate online because it's tough to showcase our spirit, our intent, and our tone when we communicate online. Now, I want to acknowledge something, that communicating online is the preferred method for so many of us but I'd like to offer a gentle reminder. There are still plenty of opportunities to talk and listen in person. Whether you need to resolve a conflict with a friend, advocate for yourself with a professor, 
or perhaps you're about to start a job search. It's okay every now and again to ask for clarity because what that does is it allows you to hear the statement or the question rephrased again, giving you the second chance to listen, and then you can respond. Because communicating online is the preferred method for so many of us, there are some that just aren't as dialed in with truly understanding the two components of every conversation, talking and listening. But when those two become in balance, it's amazing how much you can be dialed into your conversations. And at times, it's funny that the big ears and small mouth concept can do wonders. Listen a little bit more and then talk a little bit less. Now, in addition to being with my boys and being by their side, I've had the privilege to work with a lot of students across the country. Some have made some wonderful transformations and I wanna share a story about just one. There was a student that I was working with and he finally came to the realization, he said, you know, I think I do a little bit too much talking in my conversations with my friends. So we worked on him building a habit. The habit was listening. And when he practiced that habit, it became a skill. And the benefit of him getting that skill was that he earned the trust of his friends simply by listening a little bit more. And that trust built his confidence. And I think we can all agree what a transformation it is when we gain confidence. I have a quick question. I'd like you all just a quick show of hands for who here in the room, generally speaking, day to day, like to be understood. Show of hands. Okay. How about another show of hands for who in the room, generally speaking, day to day, like to understand other people? Yeah, math was never my key area. But at quick glance, that is a high percentage of you that have answered yes to both. But the payoff question for you to think about is this. What does it take? What does it take to be understood? And what does it take to understand someone else? So why does communicating in person even matter? Well, in today's Wi-Fi world, there is no better way to differentiate yourself than by having the ability to clearly concisely and confidently communicate in person. The biggest example I can think of is a job interview. Now more than ever, companies are prioritizing communication skills as a key factor in their hiring decision-making process. And even LinkedIn has come out with a report stating that 92% of talent acquisition professionals are saying communication skills are equally, if not more important than the hard skills. Let me give one example here. Imagine for a moment there's two job candidates, candidate A and candidate B, both equally well-credentialed on their resume. But when candidate A shows up to the interview, they're able to articulate the value, the ideas that they can bring to the company and is dialed into the questions that are being asked. Candidate B is struggling with being clear, isn't being very concise, and isn't locked in to the questions that are being asked. Who do you think that hiring manager is going to move forward in the process? And maybe you've seen a situation or a scene like this before. Not just teens, but young adults and adults alike. Phones in hands and eyes on phone. This online craziness that we all live in has created an endless stream of texting, direct messaging, social media posts, and maybe for those in my age bracket, a whole lot of emailing. Sometimes we think it's easier, even more efficient, just to send off that quick note. But if we all take a quick pause before we click send and ask ourselves one simple question, is my intent, spirit, and tone gonna shine through? Or is this better served as a, as a conversation? We all have such amazing technology at our fingertips. It's powerful. With a few twitches of our thumbs, we can be in touch with someone around the corner and around the globe. But communicating online has created some gaps. But if you have the ability to clearly and confidently share your story in person, not only does it enhance the impression you wanna leave, but it closes that communication gap. And maybe you've seen this type of scenario, not just a family in their living room, but individuals or groups could be in coffee shops, in an airports, and everywhere in between. We all love our technology, 
but technology has created a gap in what I consider the basics of communicating, the talking, the listening, the seeing someone's body language, the hearing of their tone, the allowing for the back and forth of a two-way conversation. This is what's required in any conversation if you want to be understood and if you want to understand someone else. Even Apple CEO Tim Cook once said about his company, we don't want our users staring at their devices all the time. He was quoted as saying, if you're staring at your screens more than someone's eyes, then you're doing the wrong thing. This is pretty significant because it correlates directly to the lack of practical skills that many of us have in having face-to-face -face conversations. The good news is there's opportunity ahead. The opportunity for the next conversation we have to showcase our character. Wouldn't it be nice that in every conversation we had from this moment forward that we were understood? And wouldn't it be nice that in every conversation we had from this moment forward, we understood someone else? Well, earlier in my talk, I asked you, and I'm pretty sure most of you, if not all of you, raised your hands, yes. But communicating online has created a whole new set of barriers and the pandemic didn't do us any favors as, the way, as it relates to the way that we communicate. But the barriers that are now in place is when we communicate online, it is much easier just to claim we are always right. Simply put, it's a one-way push of information. We don't need to listen to someone else's thoughts or hear their feedback. And when we communicate online, it is way easier to blame somebody else. Again, for the same reason, it's a one-way push of information. No need to hear someone else's thoughts or input. And when we communicate online, it is easier to argue our point of view, to push our agenda, almost as if we need to win the conversation. Now, I come from a big sports background, and when I was competing in international rugby, I loved to win. Conversations are not about winning or losing. They're about sharing ideas. They're about connecting, and they're about building relationships. I'd like to ask you for a moment to think about the conversations you've had just in the past 24 hours. Some of you may have had conversations that were really high energy. Some may have been slower paced and maybe a little more deliberate. Some, maybe they were a little more emotional. And some of us like to match the person's energy and mood and communication style of the person that we're talking with. But in every conversation, how we share our ideas matter. Did our message resonate or did it fall flat? In any conversation, how we share our ideas, it's going to trigger some type of a response, but it's up to us. It's up to us to decide. How do we want our messages to land? So I asked you to think and reflect about the conversations you had just in the past day, and now I'd like to extend a challenge for the conversations you're going to have in the next 24 hours. And the challenge is this, just to put a little extra emphasis in listening in all the conversations you have in the next day, then you can decide for yourself, was there a benefit? Did you better understand someone else? And I'm pretty certain the answer will be yes. When we speak clearly and articulate with clarity and confidence, people are gonna understand us better. And when we ask questions every now and again and get curious at times, it's going to help us better understand other people. And when we put that little extra emphasis on listening and listening to someone with some extra purpose, we can all learn. Conversations require some patience and they require perspective. But if we do give that a little extra emphasis to listening to someone else, we can learn more about them. We can learn more about their communication style and in the process, we can enhance each and every conversation that we have. At the heart of communicating effectively is listening because we all wanna be understood, but be careful because when you listen to someone, you might just learn something new. I wanna thank you for your attention and I wanna thank you for listening.